The Methodist revival began with a small group of men that included John Wesley and his younger brother, Charles. As the movement continued within the Church of England in the 18th century, they soon found themselves out of favor with many fellow Anglican ministers. Their passion and fiery evangelistic preaching were spurned and many pulpits were closed to them. Another young preacher and friend of the Wesleys from Oxford days, George Whitfield, was having the same problems. Since they would not let them preach from the pulpits of England, together they were determined to preach in the open fields and town squares. In London, George Whitfield asked Charles to stand with him as he preached to thousands in the open air at Blackheath. It was there that Charles, too, got the vision for reaching multitudes for Christ. He made his first attempt in the outskirts of London. A farmer invited me to preach in his field, he wrote. I did so to about 500. I returned to the house rejoicing. My load was gone and all my doubts were lifted. Soon he was preaching to thousands. God had shown young Charles Wesley a new path for preaching the gospel and he was confident that this was the will of God for his life. Joseph Williams heard Charles preaching and relates his account. I found him standing on a table board in an erect posture surrounded by, I guess more than a thousand people, some of them fashionable persons, but most lower rank of mankind. He prayed with uncommon fervency. He then preached about half an hour in such a manner as I have scarce ever heard any man preach. I think I had never heard any man labor so earnestly to convince his hearers that they were by nature in a sinful, lost, undone, and in a damnable state, that notwithstanding there was salvation through faith in Christ. All this he backed up with many texts of Scripture which he explained and illustrated, and then by a variety of the most forcible motives, arguments, and expostulation did he invite, allure, quicken, and labor as it were possible to compel all hearers to believe in Christ for salvation. Charles Wesley still preaches today in much the same way through his ageless hymns, which are sung around the world each Sunday. Perhaps his most exuberant anthem is the one he simply called Hymn for Easter Day, published in 1739. It originally consisted of 11 stanzas. I invite you to sing one of the most victorious and joyful hymns in all the world. Christ, the Lord is risen today. Alleluia.